Hello and welcome to tutorial 111 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you'd like to know more, please go to markplex.com where you'll find a lot more programs and tutorials covering many, many areas of TradeStation Easy Language. In today's tutorial, I was asked by a Gold Pass member to create a tutorial which talked about drawing a trend line using the manual drawing tools. And what the uh, trend line does is calculate the volume for the number of bars that are within the uh, trend line. So, for example, if I were to go here to click trend line and just to draw something between these bars here, just a few bars, then what the program would do would be to calculate the volume for those bars that are encompassed by the trend line. So what I've done, I've created two programs, one which is a lot more simple, but maybe not quite as efficient, and then a second program, which is uh, a lot more efficient. And I'm gonna make both of the programs available for download if you want to do that. You don't need to, because hopefully you'll be able to follow the tutorial and jot down the syntax. And if you're a Gold Pass member, you can download both of them for, for free at no cost. So this on this chart, I've got the second program applied. And uh, as you can see, as you move the trend lines, the value is updated and uh, actually the um, the text label is moved as well. And on the other chart, I've got the first program. You can see it's pretty similar, although the formatting is a little bit different and the workings of the program under the hood are also very different. So what we're gonna do is go to each of these programs and just go through them, starting with the first program and explain what I've done with them. So firstly, oh, and incidentally, uh, the, these, both these programs are using the volume keyword. And you probably know that in uh, TradeStation, the volume related keywords have various meanings depending on the sort of chart that you're applying them on. And they also change depending on whether you have for volume, you use trade volume or tick count in the chart settings. Let me just uh, show you that. So if you go format symbol, You'll see here that we've got for volume use, trade volume or tick count. You can choose either one of those. But what you're probably going to want to do is just study the uh, TradeStation Wiki. I put a link on the web page for this program and uh, you can get a good explanation of the various meanings there. So let's go back and look at the uh, first program. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the namespaces. These are necessary to be able to access various parts of the, the code for, for a TradeStation Easy Language that we're using in this program. And I'm not going to talk too much about the uh, variables because we're just going to be using those, but you can see them uh, in case you want to uh, write down this program. And then the first thing we're going to do, we're going to be using the charting host. And the charting host basically means that if somebody clicks on the chart, the program can, can know that somebody has clicked on the chart and do something accordingly. Now, you may not know or remember the syntax for charting host, but one thing you can do very easily, if you just go to toolbox, look for charting host. If it's not there, right, left, right click on the, uh, the data at the top, look at choose items, and you can find the charting host there. Make sure that the little arrow is clicked. And also, just for the uh, for this particular program, you might also want to make sure that you've got trend line uh, clicked because we're going to be using that in a moment. Okay, so if we go to toolbox and we have charting host available, so if you were to double click on that and then go down here to the bottom of the, the, uh, the easy language console and click on charting host, go to properties. And if you click on this sort of lightning bolt here, which is for events, what we're going to do is on the chart element click, if you just double click there, 
you'll then find some syntax that you can copy and paste into the program. So this is the actual event for the, uh, for the chart element click. And you'll see that that is very similar to this one here, apart from the name has changed slightly. The other thing that the toolbox does for us, as well as creating the, uh, the chart, charting host two event here, it also means that if we go now to view designer generator code, we can go to the uh, components declaration part of the program and we can just grab this thing here, which is um, method uh, initialize component, which runs when the program starts. And we'll need to grab from that the new charting host don't need the name and then we're going to need the event which is the thing that's going to make this uh, event click work. So having done that and copied those into our main program what we can then do is just go here and just delete that and having de deleted that we'll need to delete this as well. Okay so that is how we got our charting host update and when somebody clicks on the chart in other words when they're moving one of these trend lines around or resizing it. What we're going to do is call the calc val calc vol uh, method. And what that's going to do is just going through the functionality one bit at a time. It's going to first of all list or put in, into a vector called list all the drawing objects on the chart, which are in this case trend line created by drawing object, drawing objects. In other words, all the trend lines that we've drawn on the chart, it's going to realize where, who, which they all are, and it's going to put those objects into a vector. Now you might be wondering, how do I know that particular keyword? But if you go here and it's not working for me at the moment, but if you were to right click on that and uh, you'll see a listing of all the particular events. Let me just verify this, see if we've, no, for some strange reason that doesn't seem to be appearing on there. But if we go to the second program, you'll see here all the different options. And the one that we particularly want is trend line created by drawing object, as opposed to trend line created by analysis techniques. Okay, so let's go back to the first program. And uh, having done that, what we do is we go through each one of the objects because uh, we know that the, the number in the, the vector is list dot count minus one because we start from zero index. So we go from zero to list count minus one. And in each, in each case, we create two new, or we, we store the values in two objects, the start point and the end point, which is st storing date time objects for the starting time and the ending time of the trend line that we've drawn. And then we go through a little while statement. And what this is saying is that while the bar is greater than the starting point time, we begin. And then we say, if the time is less than the end point time in date time, then we're going to sum the, the volume. And we're doing that using the V keyword that I've already mentioned. You don't need to use that. You could use another keyword, but we, we add that up for just those bars that are within the trend line. And in each case, we increment X so that we're going through, we're going back further and further and further, looking back historic bars until we get to a point where we're either, uh, le well, we are less than the start point, then we stop. Now, what we, what we want to do is draw a text label using the information that we found. Now, in this particular program, at this point, there are two options. On one occasion, or in some cases, the text has already been drawn. And we're going to be storing that text in the tag of the trend line. Each trend line and a lot of the drawing objects have a tag, and you can store whatever you like in that. But what we're going to be doing is storing uh, an object, and the object is going to be the text label. So we're going to say, if it's not equal to null, in other words, there's already 
a text label object stored in that tag, then what we're going to do is we're going to upload, we're going to update the value, and we're going to update where it, where it's located. So what I've done, I've assigned to volinfo the text label object that's stored in the particular area in the list vector of all the trend lines. And what I've done is change the, the string by saying vol info dot text string to the cumulative volume change to a string and also change the position using set point value, which uh, I've done at the end point. Could have done it at the start point. I chose the end point. The other situation is where the trend line tag does not have a text label object stored in it. In which case, what we do is we create one and we do that using text label dot create. And the things we need to put in it are the position, endpoint, and the value, which in this case is cumul volume, volume to string. We also need to make it persist. And then having done that, we're going to add it to the chart like so. And then what we're going to do is store in the list counter. Remember, that's the vector of all the trend lines for the particular trend line that we're looking at. We're going to store in that the value, the object stored in vol info. Then we're just going to reset the cumulative volume. So that's going to take care of a lot of the uh, functionality surrounding the trend lines. But there's one final little thing we need to do here. And that is when we first apply this to the chart, we need to run it after all the after all the bars have been loaded. And we can do that by saying once last bar on charts. This only runs once, but when it's when when it, when it's gone through all the bars, we want to create a list of all the the trend line uh, trend lines that have been drawn. We do that again using this drawing object items trend lines created by drawing object object category trend lines created by drawing object command. And having done that, we just go through the list again. And uh, what I've done is set all the tags to null. So if by any chance there's any trend line data, we can't see the trend lines, but they're still lurking around and they've still got things in the tag. What I've done is reset all those tags to null. Having done that, I then go to calcfold, which will again go through that list and calculate the volume and add it to the chart. So what you get having done all that is this particular chart. And you can see that if I move the trend lines or reshape it or, or whatever, the value here is changing. What I've not done in this program is any particular formatting of the, uh, the text label or the the trend line, but uh, I think you'll probably find that relatively easy. And we're going to be covering that a bit in program two. Incidentally, the other thing that uh, you might want to just make note of is if you double click on this, you get some styling options. For example, I've got it set to green, but you could have it blue and then maybe less, less a weight. And you can set that to default if you want it to keep on occurring. You've also got the option, incidentally, if you want labels to show labels and you can include various pieces of information, not including the volume that we've just calculated, but uh, you'll see that located here. OK, so that's program one. What I'm going to do is talk about program two in another video. And so please watch out for the second video. And again, go to markplex.com to see more information or to download this tutorial, these tutorial programs.